Hey everyone, my name is Adam. I am a MCAT um, top scorer and um, an MCAT tutor here at Shamasian Academic Consulting. And today I'm going to be walking you guys through uh, Cars Passage and do a little passage breakdown and answer all of the questions. Um, all right, so here's the passage I have pulled up here. Um, we notice we have the passage here on the left and the six questions here on the right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about where this is in the MCAT, right? So this is the CARS section, which for those of you who haven't heard of it before, that stands for Critical Analysis and Reasoning section. Um, and it's going to be the second section out of four, right? So the first section, 95 minutes on chemistry and physics, 59 questions. Then this is now the second question after, or the second section after a short break, um, the CARS section, which is basically just reading, analysis, and then answering questions on what you've read. Um, so there will be nine passages to read in 90 minutes. Then we'll have a longer break um, for a little bit of a lunch. Then you'll have your last two sections, biology and biochemistry, another 95 minutes, 59 questions, short break. Then the final section, psychology and sociology. Um, again, 95 minutes, 59 questions, and then it's all done. So all said and done, this is the second section of the MCAT. Um, and yeah, basically what we want to do within this section is right. we have nine passages that we want to get done in about, well, exactly 90 minutes. Um, so at the most, we want to be spending around 10 minutes a passage you go a little bit faster than that, that's even better because then you got a little extra time in case you get upon a more difficult passage or, um, or if you just want to be able to go back at the end of your um, section and review any questions that you've done before, which is one of the strategies that you can do in all sections, but even in cars, um, you can flag a question, put down your best answer, finish out the rest of the section, and then come back and review that same question. Maybe with fresh eyes it can it might stick out a little bit more about what would be the best answer because sometimes you can get bogged down with the details a little bit. So a flagging and skipping strategy on the section can work if you leave a couple extra minutes at the end trying to do every passage in maybe nine minutes or eight minutes to give yourself some time to review at the end. Um, but yeah, so now if we get started on an individual passage like we are here, there's a lot of different various strategies that you can do to attack it. Um, there's highlighting, there's reading the questions first, then going back, there's writing summaries, there's almost an infinite amount of strategies. Um, the strategy that I'm going to be modeling here um, is going to be uh, reading the passage first and highlighting it as you go to kind of create an outline and have something to refer back to so you don't have to do a lot of rereading and then answering the questions based on that. Okay, so let's start here on the first paragraph. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit here and we can go from here all right our fathers saw them as they flipped through primetime television we heard their opinions secondhand from our next door neighbor as we grabbed the sunday paper an entire nation familiarized itself with their names their endearing puns their love for paisley bow ties and colorful pantsuits and the characteristic quiver in their throat during emotional interviews Political pundits were everywhere, and we loved them for their accessibility and political expertise. They informed and challenged us with the encroachment of avatarization, a term coined by today's leading avatar designer, Francis Lackey. The fundamental role of the political pundit has been irrevocably changed. Okay, so this whole setup thing is that political pundits are kind of a big deal. Um, and then I feel like we're setting up the whole rest of the passage here by talking about what's changed, right? We have this thing called avatization, and they name dropped this guy who's apparently the leading guy, Francis Lackey, on this avatization, and then I'm going to highlight the word changed because that's kind of the main idea there. This whole like intro part here is just kind of setting up the importance of why do we care, okay? Scroll down a little bit, go on to the second paragraph. We were never a harem of obsessive fans. Some of us saw them as experts in the field and others knew they were simply bombastic enough to appear to be so. Attitudes toward the political pundit were varied, but it's undeniable that with their nationally recognized voices, mannerisms, and interesting turns of speech, they knew how to encourage us into taking notice of the issues. Okay, so this is again, this is what is a political pundit. They, not everybody loves them or thinks that they're experts, but they, 
definitely knew how to make people take notice. That's kind of what the passage is telling us about pundits. Perhaps the pundit was the only one that could make zoning laws seem like a titillating cop topic for further investigation. Again, that's reiteration of that idea that they're just making us notice or making people who see pundits notice. Their power derived from our ability to see and think alongside them as friends. Well, that's interesting. First on the radio, then on television and our phone screens. As their faces got red, as they recounted political arguments with their in-laws, we chuckled and felt close to them, regardless of whether our specific views aligned. Okay, so we feel close. I'm going to highlight that, feel close. Right? So we kind of have this connection with pundits. All right, we'll go on. So what happens when the person we've grown accustomed to, the person behind the pundit, goes underground? This is occurring right now during avatarization. Okay, so that's a way that they're phrasing it. Goes underground, so the pundit goes underground. We call that avatarization. A new age phenomenon in which artificially generated cartoonist holograms have replaced images and videos of real people in the flesh. Okay, so it's a hologram that has replaced real people. One may argue that there is really no difference between avatars and the videos of our childhood. Okay, so no difference, we'll say. After all, wasn't everything we saw filtered through the lens of a camera and post-production edits? Okay, good point. At the very least, these productions captured humans. The close-up to the glistening tears on the pundit's face, snapshots from a political rally, they didn't manufacture or lie, they only highlighted and emphasized. Okay, so I'll highlight that, highlighted and emphasized. These are, we're talking about original um, pundits here. The central thesis of good politics is serving the human, after all. With these avatars, the human has been lost. Okay. Even as they mimic what is, all right, let's see what's at the top here, what is human, often alarmingly well, we all know that they are only the computer-generated ghosts of real people. Okay. However, we, the listeners and the viewers of the pundit, are more than partially culpable for this loss. Okay, so the listeners and viewers are culpable, so it's kind of their fault a little bit for the loss of the humanness. Let's highlight the word human as, so we know what that loss is. As we voraciously consumed the personal details of political pundits' lives, and as we demanded a constantly lengthening laundry list of credentials from our beloved pundits, the old generation of political analysts couldn't keep up. The new experts, fictional, digitized, and personalized, stepped up. So that's, that's interesting. So it's um, demand, basically. So can we find, maybe we could say voraciously consumed. It's kind of like the demand part of it. Their soothing voices were generated for each consumer by algorithm, and their appearance shifted from the topic with the topic being discussed. Social security programs for the elderly, the avatar morphed into someone 30 years older, complete with spectacles, liver spots, and pretty skin. Racial equity in medicine, skin palettes, and hair textures adjusted. Complex issues are now thus fixed with a few sartorial tweaks. Designed to provide a personalized consumer experience, the sensorial depiction of pundits depends on who tuned in, is based on no single real person, and is brought to life under the machinations of a design team. Okay, so it's, I'm just going to highlight design team, kind of this whole, like, maybe algorithm. This whole idea here is all about the demand has kind of created this personalization of the, these um, avatars. The avatar's spoken ideas, their interview questions, talking points, and informational summaries first came from a real per person, okay, right? This is coded by a real person or actually written by a real person, then a team of people, and now from algorithms that sift through news articles and blog posts for an amalgamation of stale takes, okay? Engineers presented avatarization as a solution to combat political apathy and to protect, pun protect pundits from slander campaigns, breaches of privacy, and threats against family. Okay, right? Keep, you keep pundits as people, and then you can, you can attack an avatar. It's not a real person. But in the end, the real pundits lost their jobs. Right? Okay, yeah, of course. Once valued for their infectious smiles, ideas, and wit, they are now valued for none of them which incredibly presumption group of computer engineers thought replacing political experts with cartoons would be a good idea. Okay, so clearly the author is opinionated here, right? The incredibly presumptive group, right? So again, that uh, anytime you see something in a car's passage that's very clearly in the author's voice or the author's opinion, 
that's usually pretty relevant because right being in tune with like how the author is thinking and what their point is is um, is helpful at least for a few of the questions so he clearly is not happy with this some say that the engineers were right we as political thinkers have continuously failed in our responsibility to evaluate and complicate um, the information given to us and political avatars have indeed become the most popular medium for obtaining up-to-date analysis but these coders should also be blamed for making this political avatar dystopia even a scientific possibility okay so he's kind of saying we should blame everybody should be share some blame here the coders the people who are demanding it everybody has some sort of blame here okay so yeah that's kind of what our highlighting looks like there um, as we went through the passage that uh, felt pretty pretty decent it's kind of a opinion piece right of an author talking about how he he or she feels about um, these new kind of avatar ideas and how they're replacing pundits so let's see if we can answer these questions so let's start with the first one here all right in the context of the passage what is the function of providing descriptions of the avatars ex appearance when talking about social programs for the elderly and racial equity in healthcare. Okay, so we got A, to highlight the complex coding maneuvers. No, he didn't, we did not focus on that idea of, of like how complex the coding is, right? It's all about kind of the user experience. To dismiss the accuracy with which political avatars resemble real humans, right? It's not really about resembling real humans, right? It's about um, resembling what someone wants something to look like, where the avatar is, is creating something that is not real. Okay, to illustrate how political avatars fail to mimic the endearing eccentric bow ties and colored pantsuits of older pundits. Okay, M maybe, right, they do, they do fail to mimic that. I'm not sure how that relates to the social programs, and so I'm, that's not a great answer for the actual question, but right, they do fail in some ways to recreate the whole human component. All right, to convey a sense of scorn about the superficial nature of the logic behind political avatars. Okay, you're right, so like sense of scorn, right? That's the attitude of the author, absolutely he has that. Superficial, yeah. This is a lining up with the tone of what the author is talking about and also answers our question well um, about like kind of why he even brought that up, right? So D is our best answer here. All right, number two here. How does the author's phrase, we were never a harem of obsessive fans in paragraph two, align with the author's characterization of the factors behind the rise? Okay. All right, so let's go and look at paragraph two quickly and see if we can figure out. Okay, so the we were never a harem of obsessive fans, that's how he starts it off. And then we kind of look at our highlights. We have political pundits taking notice as friends felt close. Okay, so we were close to pundits. And then the other part of the question is the author's characterization of the factors behind the rise, right? So he said some of the factors behind the rise are the listeners and viewers, um, and then the other factor would be the coders, right? So the demand from the listeners and viewers, and then the coders themselves, right? They have to have some blame as well from the author's point of view. Okay, so we were never a harem of obsessive fans in paragraph two then, um, it's well, it, it would not really align, right? Before, if we try to answer this question before we really look, so we're looking, we're not going to be looking at A because it doesn't align because that's a that's a huge component is the listeners and the viewers, right? They're creating this demand for avatars, um, so yeah, not congruent. So we're definitely going to take out A right away just for it saying aligns. It doesn't align, so it's either going to be no relation or does not align. Um, but let's let's evaluate each of these individually now. So B, no relation. The phrase is part of the author's introduction to the topic of political pundits and is unrelated to the author's later discussion of advertisation. No, the whole passage is one congruous passage. Everything relates to everything else. So B is not a good answer. C, no relation. The phrase is referring to the political pundits' inability to relate to their listeners. That's not even true. It, it was saying that they do relate well. Not relevant to, no. So we haven't even looked at D yet. We know it's the best answer because these are clearly wrong. D does not align. That's, you know, that's agreeing with what we initially thought anyways. The author's phrase contradicts the author's later characterization of political information consumers. Right. That 
that is absolutely what we were looking for. Um, because the author later says that they're a big part, them and the coders are kind of the two largest parts about the rise of avatarization, the whole obsessive fandom. All right, number three here. Suppose that a reputable research study finds that the five most watched avatars each obtain their talking points from a different political pundit who is employed under the condition of anonymity. How would the passage author most likely respond to the research finding? Right. So this is a little bit different from what the author said. The author said the political pundits all lost their jobs, and they lo like they loved being in the face. So the anonymous would be. So the employment and the anonymous part would be um, kind of disagreeing with what the author thought was happening. Okay, so if this was what's really happening, how is the author going to respond? So A is going to express surprise. Yeah, okay, that seems so far good. But measured appreciation that traditional political pundits have not become completely displaced by the avatar industry. Oh yeah, maybe. Okay, B, take the study as further evidence for the poor state of critical political engagement. No. That's not really related to what we're talking about, so B's out. C, bemusement about the reasons why political pundits would want to preserve their anonymity. Maybe, but that's not, that's not really the point of the essay, right? The, the pundits, right, they maybe would want to be anonymous, maybe not, but that's not really the point. The whole employment thing is probably pretty important. So let's take out C. It's kind of missing, missing some important components there, like the employment and stuff like that. Demand for de-anonymization of the thinker behind the avatar so that the human returns to politics? Maybe. See, this is very opinionated, which the author is, but the author doesn't seem opinionated about this part of it. It's more about the, um, like, more of the human component, not the necessarily the anonymization component of it that he's as adamant about. Um, right, he has the human, but the I don't think someone necessarily has to be de-anonymized. Um, I think a a most closely agrees with what the author would most likely do because he'd be surprised by the whole employment thing because and surprised by the end it would be both would be would be surprised especially considering how successful the author thinks the avatar industry is. All right, that's the first three there. Let's go on to number four. From the author's opening discussion of political pundits, what would be least, okay, this is important, and I always highlight this, one would be least likely to infer which of the following about the author's position. Okay, so three of these are going to be good statements like that agree with the opening discussion, and one of them is going to be not. Okay, so A, the golden age of pundits has already ended. Okay, that's, I mean, we're going to probably agree with that. The passage is pretty much saying that. B, political pundits were successful because they unified people into taking a common stance on a topic. I don't think the author would say this, or because right, the whole point of the political pundits paragraphs and discussion around them was that they just got people to engage with the topic. They didn't, they didn't necessarily unify them with a common stance. I think there was a few different times. Let's go over and look at it really quickly. But there was a few different times where he mentions that they're just, right, regardless of whether our, special, whether our specific views aligned, right? There's um, definitely evidence that um, the views are not always aligning with pundits, which means that this is not a great statement. So we're going to lean towards B right now. Before we actually pick it, let's evaluate C and D. Being and listening to a political pundit is a masculine exercise? No, he doesn't, he doesn't ever talk about men versus women. Political pundits gained popularity because they felt relatable and sparked debate and discussion. Um, did they? Okay, so they gained popularity. Yeah, that's a, actually he says that almost word for word, right? That's the um, that's the part in here, right? The friendships, the feeling close, right? That almost that entire paragraph. So that would be a very true statement. So so D is a true statement. Um, that's what. That's exactly why they gained popularity, and I realized as I struck out C that I said that it wasn't a masculine exercise, which would mean that it would be a good answer. So let's go actually evaluate this masculine exercise thing, see if we can figure out where they talked about this, if they did at all. Um, we got emotional nation, political pundits, advertisation. We got lackey. Um, we got 
attitudes, taking notice, titillating topic, friends, political arguments, um, going underground. I'm not sure if it's masculine. Being and listening to political is a masculine exercise. So between B and C here, they're both actually pretty decent answers. I, the thing about B is that it seems directly, um, directly false because of the end of paragraph two here, right? Regardless of whether our specific views aligned. So we have pretty direct evidence to say that we cannot ever say B. I'm not finding, at least immediately, where we talked about the masculine exercise portion of this. So because we don't really have any support for masculinization or not masculinization, um, I think we're just going to leave that one out. Um, because if we want to answer a question well or pick an answer, we want to go off of support. right? So that based on the opening discussion and what would be least likely to infer, this is the opposite of the idea. This is just not discussed. right? So, so B is a better answer, even though C is is also a, an, an answer. Um, it's not as good of an answer because it's just not discussed. How can you pick something that was just never discussed? Um, they could maybe get to this conclusion. It, you know, People could make up conclusions not based on the passage. All right, that was a hard one. Let's go on to number five here. Which of the following comparisons best captures the author's comparison of the older generation of political pundits and political avatar? OK, so. Oh, so we just have a couple different comparisons here. Um, so right, the old political pundits were basically the real humans, and now the political avatars are um, not real humans, right? They're fake. So we got analog watch to smart watch, maybe, old to new. Water click portrait to a filtered selfie, maybe. Written signatures to digital signatures, yeah, so this is like real to digital, or kind of all along those same lines. Service center representatives to chatbots. OK, this stands out as different from the other ones because this is like an older thing that's become advanced by technology, kind of each of these are. But this is a human, like a service center that's a real human to a chat bot, which is now a robot, no real human. So that more closely aligns with real human to not real human. OK, so D is a good one there. All right, based on the passage, how would Lackey describe avatarization? So remember, let's refer back to where was Lackey. Lackey was in this first paragraph at the end. Um, he coined the term, and he seems to be the leading avatar designer. Right? So he, he's all about the avatars. Let's see. Based on, the, OK, what would, how would he describe it? OK, so he coined the term. All right, a regrettable modern phenomenon in which artificially generated holograms have replaced images and videos of real people in the flesh. This seems like the author's point of view, not Lackey. Right, Lackey is the guy who is all for it, so no. All right, a hallmark of the modern generation that has enabled people to access highly personalized political information. That seems like a pro-avatar thing. I like B. Let's leave that one around. Let's look at C and D. All right, see, a revolutionary scientific tool that has combined algorithmic techniques with the ideas and speaking voices of today's leading political experts. Close. Right, I like the beginning of this statement. Revolutionary scientific tool up through algorithmic te techniques, that's all good. But I don't know if the ideas and speaking voices of the political experts is actually necessarily true. Right, it's not really about expertise, it's about um, personalization, right? So C is not the best answer. And then D, a dystopic vestige of the era of the traditional pundit. No, he, right, this is, this is more of author's point of view as well. So A and D are author's point of view. B and C are both decent answers. B does seem like a better choice um, because that, it's all about personalization, right? It's not necessarily about being an actual expert on things. It's just about personalizing it to what people want. So B is going to be a slightly better answer. All right, so that's kind of all we got there. Um, that's the whole passage. So yeah, thanks for joining me on um, that walkthrough. I hope that that was helpful for you. And um, good luck on the your rest of your studying for the MCAT and um, your car studying. And if you click in our description below, um, there 
you can sign up to our email list and we'll send you an MCAT question every day that can kind of keep you on the path of continuing to, to study um, and prepare for the MCAT. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you later.